Hello again and welcome to another edition of Sudson Country. Hi, I'm Herb Sudson and welcome to the show. Today we're at Unami Farms in Hillsborough, New Jersey, and I have the owner, Jim Doyle, with me. Tell us about Unami Farms, Jim. Well, Unami Farms is uh, named after the Unami Indians that lived in central New Jersey. Uh, they were a subtribe of the Lenai and Lenape. My dad, Richard Doyle, who owns the farm, has a, a large collection of Indian stones. He decided to name it Unami Farms. He loves the history of the Indians. How many years have you been here in Hillsboro? Uh, this farm has been in our family for five generations, so it's about the turn of the century. And what, what have you done with the farm? I see it was an old, original old farm. What have you turned the farm into now? Well, as you can see, we've opened it up to the public. We're actually sharing it with the public and getting, letting them get a taste of farm life. Uh, we have hay rides going on. We have a cornfield maze. Uh, Tell us rides. about the maze. Well, the maze this year is 10 acres. It's surrounded by uh, sunflowers to give it a border. It's pretty complicated. It's called the castle maze. And it has, uh, it's based on fairy tales that deal with castles. So we have uh, Cinderella, Robin Hood, uh, Beauty and the Beast, and Rumpelstiltskin. There are clues that help you get through. I was through the maze a little bit ago. It's quite an amazing thing to go through that. I went through Beauty and the Beast and Rumpelstiltskin. Well, the beast didn't get you, did he? I'm out. I came out. I came out. So, pretty interesting. What else do you, uh, is that maze, is that a record maze? What did you tell well, me about we, that? We applied to the Guinness okay. uh, Book of World Records. We haven't heard from them yet. Okay. As you can see, though, there's also a big round hay bale maze out there. Over 150 round hay bales make it up. Each bale weighs almost 1,000 pounds. So, uh, that's also an added attraction. The little kids, I just seen one little kid on top, they do like it. They, that's, a, that's just a, a, a preliminary to the major, major maze. That's right. Now, that's right. does anybody get lost in the maze? Yeah, we've had them. And also, we've opened it up on Saturday nights for a moonlight maze. Wow. Last night, last, uh, last night we had like uh, quite a few people here, mostly family groups. And they go into the maze at night with flashlights. Unbelievable. And last night, of course, there was only a little sliver of a moon. So it was, a moon, it was more of a flashlight maze. Any, anybody get lost? Is it easy to get lost in the dark there? Yeah, uh, we, we monitor it, and uh, if they're not out in a certain time, we take the tractor out with the lights on, mm -hmm. and they can work their way toward the lights so that there's no problem. And uh, we haven't had a problem yet, but we have had to go in after some people. <laughs> How many years have you been doing this amazing thing with the maze? It's our fifth year now with the maze. This is the biggest one we've had. So uh, we felt maybe it'll get a record this year. You're the only one in New Jersey with a maze? Well, I think there's quite a few mazes. Yeah, I, I, I have the feeling we're the largest, though. Very good. Oh, well, I'm happy to be here with Jim Doyle. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. It's been a pleasure. All right, we're here with the goat pen uh, here at Unami Farms in Hillsboro. What's your name? Mario. And? Mario Nicholas. Okay, and the girls are? Uh, Victoria and Marissa. Okay. They look like they're having fun feeding the goats here. Oh, they're having a ball. Have you been through the corn maze yet? No, we're going to do that next. Have you ever been through the corn maze here? No. No? No. It's an it's amazing trip through there. We just finished it. It's a great... It'll take you a while to walk through there. Yeah, we're going to do that next. Have make, some fun there. Make sure you don't lose the girls, that's yeah. all. <laughs> okay. We're still here at Unami Farms in Hillsboro, New Jersey, and we're by the sheep pen this time around. And I have who with me? Debbie. Debbie, welcome to Sudson Country. Talk to me about the sheep. These here are Dorset sheep. They're a meat, a meat sheep rather than a wool sheep. These are about medium size. Now, the father of them all is named Sturdy, and he's the father of all these rams. He's down on the end. And uh, these, these sheep, like I say, are raised primarily for meat. Their wool is a bit too coarse to wear next to your skin, but it's nice and spongy, so it makes wonderful blankets when you weave it. Do they make good seat covers for your cars? Sure. Okay. Well, how many do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven? Seven? Uh, I think. The yeah, ewes okay. are not out here. The okay. ewes are in a different field right now. But this here's Daddy. His name is Sturdy. Hey, Daddy. <laughs> what's, be, what's behind you? Over here are the large bronze turkeys. Farmer Doyle likes these the best because they resemble their wild cousins the most. These are being raised for market. Now, when they're full grown, they'll give you about a 25-pound carcass weight, which is, which is the part you eat. I enjoy drumsticks every now and then. <laughs> Debbie, you, you're, you have a spinning... You have a spinning wheel behind us. Use the wheel for that, uh, the wool that came right off sturdy this spring. Well, let's take a look at that. We're going to go right over there in a few seconds. All right, Debbie, what are you doing now? Now, this spring, sturdy was sheared. 
Now, I can't use the wool. I could spin the, really spin it as it comes off the sheet, but I don't really like to. It's kind of dirty. It's full of all the grease and the, and the sweat and the seeds. And it looks pretty much like this one right here. This is an unwashed piece of fleece. Now, when I wash it, it you see it still wants to, to hang in the way it grew on the sheep's back in all these nice little curls. So what I do is I comb it out just pretty much like this, just to fluff it out, just to separate all the different threads. And then I will spin the wool. Now see, when we spin the wool, what we're doing is we're adding twist to it. Twist is like a type of energy. And like a tire swing, if you let it go the other way, you have to keep spinning in one direction, because if you let it go the other way, it untwists. So in this, I'll take the piece of the old and lay it over top of the, the new wool to come out, and then just keep pulling it out. So this, what's going to spinning, is already the wool. Right, this is all wool on this and on that one as well. Now you can see Sturdy's wool is just a little off-white, whereas this wool was, was bought from a mill, and this one, that one is much whiter. But you say it can just keep going, and as long as I keep adding twist, and see I'm overlapping the fibers. They're not going in like this. They're going in like this. Okay. And as long as I keep overlapping the fibers, I can make a continuous strand of yarn. What do you do with the yarn when you're done? Well, my daughter weaves with it, and I knit with it. I knit her a vest last year from Shetland, and also had a, fur, a dog fur trim on it. Her scout buddy's dog was shedding, and great big clumps on the kitchen floor. And I said, can I have it? And they said, sure. I picked it up. It makes a yarn very much like Angora. Well, it looks like you have a pretty interesting job here. I'm going to think, I'm going to watch you... Uh Spin the yarn? Right, I'm spinning the wool into yarn. Well, my friends, time to wrap up this edition of Southern Country at Doyle's Unami Farms in Hillsboro, New Jersey. As you can see, we have an overview of the whole farm, the old barns here, and we have a cow here. We have a couple goats there. It's pretty interesting here in Hillsboro, New Jersey. I'm glad I came over here to visit Doyle's Unami Farms. <laughs>